Well, it's been 10 months or so, almost a year since I've installed these solar panels on the roof of the RV. It's like 1740 total watts with these four large panels and you know I did it with uh, not screwing or bolting anything through the roof of the RV and just using the strut channel and VHB tape and some other adhesive stuff but uh, I've been getting a lot of questions uh, about this setup and you know people asking how's it holding up because they want to do or have already done something similar on their own rig. So far this year we've been you know from Mexico all the way up through Alaska with this rig. I think it's a pretty good test and a good time to tell you how things are holding up. Obviously everything's still here fastened down to the roof of the RV but I've made some modifications, some things that I've done for tilting and some changing out of brackets and I've also done something I said I wasn't going to do initially which was drill a few holes uh, into the roof and I'll explain why I did that and uh, I think you'll get it. Let's dive right into the uh, mounting system, show you what I did uh, for that and how it's holding up. Well, before I get started, I wanna just throw this out that I am by no means saying this is the best or manufactured approved uh, way to to mount these uh, solar panels on your RV. This is just something that I wanted to try and I felt confident that I could make it work and that it was gonna that it was gonna be structurally sound um, and you know after you know all the travel that we've done you know through all kinds of conditions wind and rain and cold and hot uh, it's it's held up quite well so I just wanted to throw that out if you decide to do something like this on your RV, certainly you know take what I've done maybe and uh, and make a, make the changes that you need to make to to make sure that you feel comfortable that it's structurally sound on your rig on the type of surface that you're mounting it on and that you've you know taken some precautions to guard against wind and you know lift and all those sorts of things. So you know conditions will be different based on you know the type of surface and RV that you install it on. Enough of this, uh, let's talk about the mounting system here. You know you can see right now that you know the tracks are still there, they're nicely secured to the roof, but they're a bit dirty because we've been in all kinds of dust you know down in Mexico and southern Arizona and all the way through the Yukon Territory in Canada, Alcan Highway, all of that stuff. A lot of uh, weird conditions and it's still holding up quite well. And for the first few months I would always uh, come up here especially after a long drive and and you know just check everything make sure the bolts haven't come loose and just do the little tug tests you know throughout uh, the fronts and the sides and all the uh, parts of the solar panels just to make sure that nothing's coming loose and, and nothing really has. But in preparation for our trip up to Alaska uh, I just wanted to do one more thing just to make sure that there wasn't going to be any kind of uh, lift or delaminating uh, because I know that the, uh, the strut channel itself was secured really well to this outer fiberglass phylon layer but if you look underneath that there's just one more like sixteenth of an inch of, uh, of Luan under there so it's just a little thin plywood piece so that and another really thin fiberglass piece is all there is to this roof and then you got like uh, three inches or so of styrofoam. What I was concerned about was just any potential for uh, that pulling away or maybe separating the the fiberglass layer from the other layer. Now I haven't been having any issues related to that but I just wanted to make sure. It wasn't uh, really necessary I think but it was just uh, a little added insurance uh, for me. So just drilled a small hole, put a bunch of sealant in there, put in a bolt with a washer until everything came oozing out and then covered the whole thing again with this self-leveling uh, sealant and uh, that's the way it's been sitting uh, for the last few months and you know we've been through all kinds of bumpity bumps and ups and downs up in Alaska and you know it's it's uh, surprisingly well maybe not surprisingly but it has held up really really well uh, without any any anything being compromised at all that I could tell. You know a lot of folks have asked me you know if I would do this type of uh, mounting system on an RV with a rubber roof and 
I typically would tell them not without putting some uh, sort of anchor through the roof itself because typically on a rubber roof you have uh, you have some sort of plywood backing there that's you know that's definitely something you could drill through and put a nice uh, anchor in. Um, I didn't really have that on on my roof because it's just such a thin layer there so I really don't have a lot to work with but on a rubber roof it doesn't hurt to put in you know a few anchors through the Unistrut uh, because there's more of a potential for delamination on a rubber roof and uh, yeah, so again, just use your own judgment. Uh, do what you think is going to be the most secure setup for your rig. And don't be afraid to drill some holes into the roof. As long as you seal it properly, you'll be good to go. Now, I also ended up uh, replacing the, uh, the brackets on the inside edge of, of these solar panels with a taller stainless steel bracket. And you can see these are quite a bit taller. I had these left over from... From somewhere I <laughs> just pulled them out but they're working really well they're a little bit higher they kind of lift this inside of the panel up just enough now I don't know if you can realize this but but my uh, roof here it has a slight bow to it so you know in the middle of the panel you know it's, it was a little closer than on the ends I wanted to lift it up so now the panel actually slopes a little bit from the inside down now I didn't want to lift the end too much because that would just kind of open me up to some potential uh, wind and turbulence to, to get under the panel. I didn't want that. So uh, having it on the inside actually just gives me a little bit of, of, of a way for the, the warm air to come out and vent out. And also it uh, gives me a little bit more space here uh, for when I want to tilt the panel from this direction. And when I tilt it, this whole uh, inside edge actually hinges up like that. So I replaced uh, the, the washer in here with a, a vinyl washer that's gonna just allow me to, to move this a little bit more and I don't have to worry about you know having it too tight where it just won't move and I have to tighten it every single time. You can see the inside washer here and then the outer washer and then my quarter 20 with a lock washer underneath it. Now when I do want to tilt the panels to maximize the angle to the sun, especially in the winter, I can do that on either side. So I can either raise both panels on, uh, on the, the driver's side or both panels on the uh, passenger side. And I do that from this outer edge in, depending upon how my uh, RV is, uh, is oriented to the sun. All I have to do is really is to remove this, uh, this bolt here and it's a 7 16 uh, quarter 20 uh, little bolt and insert this little riser. I think it's about a 16 inch riser here. Just gets inserted right there. I can do this on both sides of the panel and just raise it up and secure everything down. It's got a little, you know, twisty here. So works really, really well. Kind of this giant wing nut. Also a quarter 20 uh, insert here. I may end up making a slightly longer one, uh, just maybe 22 inches or so. Used it a lot in Mexico and also in, uh, you know, in Southern Arizona in the desert uh, boondocking. And it's, it's really uh, helped to, uh, to improve, you know, the, the current going into the battery. And I've done it on both sides. So it's really nice to be able to do that. Now, having raised the uh, panel up a little bit here on the inside, I went ahead and, and mounted uh, some brackets here right in the middle and this is just a little L bracket with one of those anchors into the strut channel and another L bracket with a wing nut to snug it down and some like rubber uh, stuff underneath here. So what this does is actually gives the middle a little bit of support because the panel's so long it didn't have really anything in the middle and it's not resting on the strut channel anymore. I felt that I needed this now and I didn't want any uh, any motion any movement in the panel as I was driving down the road. Now in the installation video I did mention that I wanted to install some kind of baffle here on the front edge of the uh, of, especially on the front solar panels that are here facing the world as I drive down the highway but I just wasn't sure you know what material to use for that and I found the answer at, uh, at the hardware store and it was just a um, a vinyl rain gutter 
like this. In fact, this is uh, what's left of it. And you know, this is gonna be something that's gonna hold up to the weather and I could just modify it and adapt it to use uh, for this baffle. And it's worked out pretty well. Uh, what I ended up doing is uh, essentially just cutting it like this way, just using a cutting wheel. And then from there, I could use it to cover that front edge uh, of the solar panel. You know, on the inside mounting, I just took a, a simple L bracket and I drilled a hole through it and I put in a rivet to hold it on. And then I could anchor the whole thing just using a nut onto the uh, strut channel on one of those anchors and easy to remove if I need to. In fact, I loosen them up when I, when I do the tilt um, just so they don't get in the way. But it works really, really well. Now on the rear panels, I uh, just did one. It was kind of a, just a, a one piece here, just as a, at a slight angle. Uh, I didn't really need a whole lot because it's all the way in the back of the RV. I didn't put anything here on the front of this one because it's so close to this uh, this vent. And uh, this one's just uh, just an easy thing, kind of the same technique. Got a rivet here and a little L bracket that I just bent at a slight angle, and it's mounted on either side. You can see it's just a little bit loose, but just enough to divert anything that comes back here up and over. Now, on this one, didn't seem to really make much of a difference. It hasn't really uh, taken the brunt of any kind of wind, so I think we're good. Now, it's been pretty easy to keep these clean. I pretty much just, uh, every once in a while, I'll come up here with a, a squeegee, you know, the kind you use on your car, and just kind of wipe it down, and then I'll squeegee it off, and that seems to uh, do the trick pretty well. And I haven't really had to remove the panels much to clean underneath, which is something I thought I would have to do. And because I have this gap here, you know, with this taller bracket, I'm able to just get a hose and a little jet and just kind of spray that all the way down on the inside of these panels. And, you know, it just flushes any dirt and dust that's accumulated underneath there, leaves, and just kind of blows it out the other end and the water just runs out those gaps on the, uh, on the downward side, the downward sloping side of the panel. So, so keeping them clean, keeping the area underneath clean has, uh, has actually been pretty easy. Now in terms of uh, solar performance, I'm really, really happy with uh, how that's turned out because, you know, even though we haven't really been in full summer yet because we went from winter in southwest in Mexico and then we headed up into Alaska, uh, we kind of skipped out, you know, the that direct sun angle. But even while tilting and everything, I've gotten some really good solar performance. And keep in mind too that uh, that each one of these panels has a designated, uh, has a dedicated uh, solar charge controller. And that's primarily because these put out such high voltage that uh, putting them in series and all that stuff, uh, it's gonna generate a really high voltage which is gonna exceed the ratings of a lot of the uh, solar charge controllers. So it just made perfect sense just to get individual ones and that's gonna give me a lot more performance because none of them are dependent upon each other or are gonna be affected by one another. But I'll go uh, through that uh, in a future video with you. But overall, the performance is good. I knew what I was getting when I bought these panels because these are high-end sun power panels with really good uh, cell technology in them. And it's pretty common to get, uh, you know, out of the 1,700 watts of solar, you know, to, to at least pull 1,000 uh, watts out of that. Um, and it doesn't even have to be sunny. You know, I can pull a lot of that out when it's partly cloudy. Even when uh, conditions are cloudy or rainy, I'm still able to get uh, 400, sometimes 500, 600 uh, watts out of the whole system. Outside of that, you know, 1300 watts is uh, is not unusual. 13, 14, 1500 watts is is quite common. I haven't made any changes to the charge controller setup at all. Uh, it's just been kind of a set it and forget it kind of situation. Pretty happy with the performance. Uh, there have been some times where you know I've I've had excess uh, solar, which is always a good thing and I've been able to uh, use that uh, to, for cooking or whatever and even uh, charging our friend's uh, uh, electric car uh, with uh, you know with the excess uh, power that we've been able to generate you know and this happened down in uh, Mexico so that worked out really really well and it's kind of a cool thing. 
Well, my favorite uh, parts of that whole rooftop setup are, first of all, it's only four solar panels. And with those four solar panels, I'm able to get 1,740 watts out of it. And it's a really clean look. If you just go up there and you look at the setup, it's nice and clean with those four panels. Everything's kind of tidy. And finally, what I am going for here is not this like, boom, I got all this solar. You know, it, I like it because you can't really see it from street level you look up you don't really see anything you don't really know that there's this big old solar array up on the roof so i've always wanted that kind of uh, look kind of keep the uh the character and the look of the rv but uh you know just really kind of pimp it out with all this uh, cool stuff that you can't see well, if there's some part of this uh, solar panel mounting setup that I didn't cover that you want more information on, please drop uh, your questions and comments and thoughts in the comment section of the video and we'll get those answered for you. But I think that's going to do it for this update. I just wanted to talk about that part of the system. I'll probably go into more depth about the inverter and the servo and all the communication and set up for that and tell you how that's working as well. Uh, and I'll do that in a future video. But I uh, hope you got something out of this and uh, it's going to help you out and you know with any project that you have going on. But if you want more information about our setup as a whole, you know, I'm going to put up more information on the website. I'll give you links and stuff in the description. And don't forget, you can always get the uh, the uh, the wiring diagram for our whole system is available for download as well. So take care and I'll uh, see you in the next one.